Today on Co-op for Two, a quick spoiler-free review of three different escape room games from three different companies that are new to me. Which did I like best? Stay tuned to find out. Today we'll be looking at three games, Finders Seekers New Zealand, Escape Night of the Vampire by Escape the Crate, and Legend of the Yeti by The Conundrum Box. These are all escape room games, which means there's some narrative, but mostly puzzles, abstract puzzles, visual puzzles. And in the end, you don't get it wrong or right. You simply have to solve a number of puzzles to proceed to the ending. As a reminder, we purchase all of the games that are played on this channel ourselves. I have no relationship with any publisher. If you want to see a more unbiased content like this, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. And probably the last thing I should say is that the companies that make these games are all subscription-based companies. You sign up for a monthly fee and you get a new box every month. I have just picked one random box from each company. They may not be the best representative of the kinds of games you'll get from the company. Just a look at one game from each company. Let's start with Finders Seekers. This is the New Zealand box. Now this is gonna be a spoiler free review, but I am gonna show you the contents of the box, what you would see the moment you open it. If you really are a stickler for these things, and I don't think you should be, you could just skip around to the very end of the video. But let's just look at the components you get, typical components from a box like this. Here are documents, drawings with puzzles, you can see, and a little bit of story, not too much. We've got a larger map here a little puzzle solving thing, and some final page with hints, etc. Okay, so that's what a typical box would look like and some props here. Finder Seekers costs $36 a month for their subscription service, $36 including shipping. I don't believe that they have a way to order specific boxes online. You must subscribe, I believe that's right. And in contrast to many of this escape room type puzzle games, this one is very family friendly. You can see it's focused on a much younger audience, maybe school aged kids. It was quite easy compared to most of the escape room games that I play on the channel. It took us, still took us three hours or so to play through this on YouTube. You can watch our live playthrough, but we took our time. It seems like the the gimmick, the hook of Finder Seekers is that each box is set in a different country. And it's very much structured to give you sort of like a tour of that country, going to different regions and reading a little bit about them and seeing photos of those regions. So it's almost like puzzle game slash uh, travel tourism game. There is very minimal narrative and story here. No real acts, not really separated into groupings of acts, more like a sequence of independent puzzles with, in my opinion, a sort of anticlimactic ending. There is minimal use of the internet. There are hints available, but they're printed on a sheet here, so you don't need to use the internet for that. And I would say the puzzles are maybe more oriented towards sort of abstract spatial visual puzzles than many of the escape room games we play. Next up, Escape the Crate, Night of the Vampire. Let's take a look inside here. We've got some props, some postcard, double-sided stuff, a little bit of instruction. Then we have a whole bunch of documents in different groupings. We've got some sealed envelopes that are breaking up the game into multiple acts. 
some large full size double sided pages, color glossy, and then some more props, etc. And then I've got an envelope of pieces that got cut out. And then we've got a box which has got some art and gameplay stuff inside it. So Escape the Crate games are generally about $45 shipped for individual boxes, but you can subscribe for about $36 per month. I would say the experience playing Night of the Vampire was quite different than Finder's Seekers. This is a very thematic and atmospheric game. I would say it's not really adult. It was a little bit more tongue in cheek with some humor, but much more focused on creating an atmospheric, creepy, fun experience. Difficulty wise, I would say maybe medium difficulty with some excellent puzzles. Uh, several elements that had to be cut up. Now they're not destroyed, but it means if you pass it along, you're going to pass it along with cut up pieces, although it's not really part of the deduction. So I don't think you're robbing anyone, just saving them a little bit of work. Uh, but again, the cut up pieces being assembled spatially and stuff does make give the game a sort of unique feel. There were actually some elements here that we haven't seen um, in previous games, except maybe Curse of the Dark, where you're sort of playing with the pieces, not just using them to solve things. There's also a real element here of sort of a choose your own adventure where there's some decisions that are being made for narrative purposes, not really deduction purposes. It took us about six hours to play through on YouTube. You can watch that playthrough. Quite a bit of multimedia and internet use here including an option to have all of the text narrated for you online, which might be appealing to your group. I would say overall, a quite original and unusual system of dividing the case into acts. And a, one unique mechanic that I've not seen in previous games is the use of a bunch of cards that go on the table. And when you're solving a mystery, you know that you you know that a puzzle is to be solved with the cards that are face up. They're large oversized postcards that are face up on the table. And then as you advance, you're told to flip over certain cards and then those other sides of the cards become available for the next puzzle. So it's a little bit of a guided uh, staged experience and it offers a little more of staging in addition to the acts where you open up an envelope to start a new act. You've also got this sequencing staging of things because you've got different cards in front of you available for each puzzle. On the other hand, it does make some of the puzzles a little easier since you know, okay, this puzzle is only going to be only going to need the stuff in front of me to solve it. Maybe a bit more linear than some of the other escape room games. Next up, the Conundrum Box Legend of the Yeti. It's actually part of a sub-series called the Great Explorers Society. Let's take a look at what you get inside. A traditional getting started thing. Some letter, a nice big brochure and map. And then a set of four envelopes that are staged. You'll be told when to eat, open each one and open it. Some have some props inside. Some just have a couple of pieces of paper. So Legend of the Yeti and the Conundrum Box games in general are about $51 for a single specific box, or you can subscribe, I think for about $37, $38 a month. There are some larger double size boxes that are double the cost. I would say uh, Legend of the Yeti was similar to Escape Night of the Vampire, extremely thematic and atmospheric. There was some humor and tongue in cheek stuff here as well, but 
in some ways it almost combined uh, Finder Seekers and Escape the Crate in that you go on a real adventure here. There is some real narrative and story, but it is a travel story, an exploration story that spans quite a long period of time. So you really do get the feeling that you're going on a quest on an adventure with this game. I would say the puzzles were um, quite, a, there were quite a few puzzles and ranged in difficulty from some really easy ones to some quite hard ones. In fact, some puzzles that you may need to use the hint system if you're not playing with a large experienced group. The website does have uh, quite a bit of multimedia, although maybe not as much as Escape of the Crate, but it's very well done. And the structure of the website is also such that, unlike most of the games we play here, it almost walks you through the entire experience. Now, that does mean you're spending a little bit more time on your internet device, on your tablet, than you would through many of these other games. On the other hand, it does make it feel more of a cohesive adventure. And it also means that the hint system is sort of built into it. So at any time, if you get stuck on a puzzle, you're right there at that stage where you can ask for a couple of fine grain hints and the hints are very well done. I would say just summing up here, very generous narrative element, a good plot, good pacing, nice finale, and a very nice separation into a generous grouping of acts makes it uh, as a total experience quite satisfying. Took us about five hours to play through on YouTube, so the longest of the bunch here. Okay, final thoughts and rankings. I guess I would say my favorite here is Legend of the Yeti, and I am very interested in trying more from this series, The Great Explorer's Society. If they can combine this adventure with this travel experience, heavy on narrative, uh, I'm in. With one little caveat, I have heard from people who played multiple boxes from the Conundrum box series that they can be mixed quality. So this may be of all of these, the company you'll want to look for reviews before you purchase a specific box. Next up for me would be Escape Night of the Vampire. I love the atmosphere here and the sort of focus on having a almost like a choose your own adventure while you're solving the puzzles. I love the theme and atmosphere. I'd especially be interested in playing more sort of supernatural games in this series. And lastly, Finder Seekers. I think the bottom line here is that this is not for me. Uh, I'm not really interested in playing more from this company, but it's not targeted at me. So maybe if you've got a younger audience, maybe middle school kids, um, this might be a great sort of family friendly, fun travel, learn about a different country type of puzzle game, a way to introduce them to these kinds of games. Again, if you like these videos, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.